All right, I want to do a quick overview of this guitar, and since I have to take it apart anyways to put the strap holder on the bottom, I might as well take this opportunity to do that. So this is a 360 Les Paul, as you can see. It has mechanical frets. It has a guide button. Um, I don't know how I can press it with the camera on. The D-pad does not function. It's just glued in place as well as the um, connect button is also glued in place. The phone jack was removed and now the cable comes out of it. Uh, has stock strum bar, stock switches, a whammy off of an explorer, just because I paired it with the original board. Um, you know, why not? Uh, it has a removable neck, which I'll show in a second. And then I'll pop this thing apart and I'll show you what the internals look like. I do want to show this because the whole faceplate is white. It's not painted. This was actually a mirror-finished faceplate that I had on um, a Les Paul that I converted to Guitar Hero Live in the past. We got a video from like five, six years ago on that. And over the years, it got scuffed up a little bit. It got scratched and whatnot. And I went to go polish it recently. And when I was polishing it, I realized that the finish on it was so thin that it was just sanding right through. So I decided to sand it all down bare and then spray it with like a nice clear. Because when I didn't have the clear on it, um, even just touching it, it would get really dirty. So I figured I would sand it down and then put some clear on it. And uh, yeah, it turned out pretty good. I mean, it's just a bare, you know, whatever. But there's no paint. That's the coolest part. Is that it's a fully white faceplate that's, you know, more or less just printed that way. Or, or not printed, um... What's the word I'm looking for? Molded that way. I have here a D sub 15 pin. I wound up getting the 15 pins cheaper than I could get the 9 pins for, so I just do that. And I also use one extra or two extra wires, even though there's only eight wires needed. I wire 10 wires in. That way, if there's any ever issues, I have two spare wires. And then I've got the 15 pin D sub male on the body. The reason why I use 15 pin instead of 10 pin is it was just cheaper, um, you know, and it doesn't hurt to have the extra ones. So uh, we'll get this thing apart and then I'll show you the internals for it all. And then here's the inside of this guy. Here we have the D sub connector that I probably made the wires a little too long, but you know, I routed them around the strum bar. They go right to the board. I have the guide here that goes over to here and then you'll see um, I have an LED through a DC uh, voltage converter. It's really just there because all my LEDs are 3 volts. And on top of this board being 5 volts, I also like to dim them a little bit. They're pretty strong right off the bat, like just a solid 3 volts. So I'll turn this down to about 2.7. And I got these a long time ago for the wireless guitars since those are 3 volts. So it doesn't hurt. I picked up uh, like 30 of these things for 15 whole bucks. So I like to throw those into a lot of guitars, um, but you'll see this is from a Guitar Hero. It says GH7 on it, it's Guitar Hero Live. I just took the um, the start and back buttons, the board there, and then I made it fit to where the guide was. So that pad fits there, and then I just cut the board to fit here. You got the Les Paul, oh, sorry, the Explorer board obviously over here. You got your start select, those get wired into this guy. Um, I made an extension for the whammy there, and then I routed the USB cable up through here and into the old uh, phone jack. And you see I cut the board out just to fit that in there. This isn't used anymore, but it's still just there for filler of sorts. Um, and this strum bar is actually out of a Les Paul for a PS3, so that's why you see that it's modified there. And this was actually in an Explorer before, so that's why I have different holes. Let's try to get some light in here. I have different holes cut out. But because I'm throwing it back into a Les Paul, it's like that. So yeah, um, pretty basic stuff. But there you go. There's the guitar, just as it is. The inside of the neck is nothing special. It's just a hobby CNC board wired up to a female D sub connector. But it's nice that there's a lot of real estate in here that you're able to fit everything in. Um, it's also nice that there's a guide button. I know I didn't do the D-pad, but he also said he didn't need it and he wasn't super interested in it. 
but I figured if you're on console, you need the guide button at the very least. And also the LED just because, hey, when the guitar is on, you want it to be, you know, and I even put it into the one spot. Um, you want it to have some type of indicator. One thing that I like to do with all of my builds is make an indicator of sorts. I'd feel weird when a guitar is plugged in and there's no light or anything of the sort. That's why my, uh, my personal Wii guitar has lights all in it, like a whole bunch of lights. Um, a guitar I made for Dan had some lights in here that this board actually crapped out on, sadly. But, you know, it was there and it worked. So, uh, yeah. And then now Watch Me FC, a pretty good song with this guitar. <laughs>
There you go. That's how you break in a new guitar.